Good Monday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine uh, YouTube channel that talks about the SUVs and the cars and trucks and motorcycles and dogs and yeah, Ice Age TV, internal combustion engines. That, that stands for. Good morning, everybody there who's tuned in my channel. Appreciate the support, nice comments, and watching me. And boy, it's Monday morning. Beautiful weather up here. Beautiful. Actually, this is the nicest yet. As far as kind of what I've been through the last uh, good month or more of being in Florida, even being down in Tennessee, it was really hot down there, but then it got really cold. And we're back from our road trip, which, wow, <laughs> if you're watching my channel, you kind of know that conversation. The, the, the driveway's going to grow. The driveway's going to grow because I have a lot of vehicles to come back home up here. I'm just going to run out of space. Yeah, I mean, wow. I mean, just beautiful, beautiful weather. It's not too humid, not too hot. So it's just a nice, nice day. And look how clear it is. Oh, I've been rejected. Yeah, I think the word today, the conversation today is rejected. And just like rejected. Does anybody know that feeling? Isn't that just like a terrible feeling when you're rejected? And that's such a broad uh, word can be used in so many different ways of aspects of our life, of our own experiences. Come on, Pop, little German Shepherd puppy guy. He's inside the house with the daughter. Come on, Pops, let's go. Come on, get in the house. Here's the F-150 lady. And yeah, the, brought back my golf clubs and, man, motorcycles. Right now, there's four motorcycles in that trailer over there. I couldn't even get back the fifth one. And I still have three cars down there in Tennessee which I'm bringing everything back home. Kind of just separate myself from that. That's kind of more of the family challenges, which boy, oh boy, if you're a married man and have family or just have family, you know how challenging it is to keep everybody happy in relationships. And I tell you what, uh, yikes. That's kind of why I said to myself, rejected. More than ever in today's society and world are we being rejected, more than ever. Yeah, I brought back all my and helmets and accessories i mean i am just so out of room here's that nice bronco boy what the bronco i just think the bronco i just think that's it right there the brapta and yeah i got my indian so how many motorcycles do i have yeah too many too much stuff so let's get the day going and time seems just to go by so quickly come on pops get on up here you know i just kind of just left the office and Thursday afternoon, and we got down to Tennessee. And so Friday was a productive day because I was able to get my Ford Power Boost. If you watch my videos, that Ford Power Boost, I should have showed that out there a second ago. That truck is just such a great truck. I just can't emphasize enough. Some sure some people, you've heard these Ford Power Boost, you know, um, videos in the tow review. That truck, that truck just does such a great job and it just has so many features on it that make it so nice to be user friendly and comfortable so I've got videos on that if you're watching my channel go to those Sunday videos where I posted a lot of time I me mean, talking about that Ford power base and be telling with it was 7k trailer which is such just a perfect match for it got my so if you're going, what's going on in the world, right? Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a just never ending. I just am on the road, going places, traveling. I think right now I'm doing 50, I'd say good 50 to 60,000 miles a year at least. I'd have to say just me. <laughs> you know, riding around my cars, if not more. And because it's just the traveling back and forth to Florida, traveling back and forth to Tennessee. Then running my business. So, uh, but anyways, so yeah, the rejection. So everybody here in life knows being rejected is kind of the worst. It's just the worst that you feel like, um, oh, is my sticker, is my, my Bronco sticker behind me is actually uh, doing okay. Look at that, huh? See there? <laughs> Some people comment on that. It's like, that thing's driving me nuts. I need to get a frame. Can I remember that? Oh my gosh, last night we took the Gator out. That Gator, oh that Honda. I came back in yesterday, got back home about 3.30. By the time I unloaded all the gear, didn't unload the motorcycles, 
where am I gonna put the motorcycles? <laughs> motorcycles gotta stay in the trailer. That's that's the that's the garage for the most part. And anyway, so I got the uh, once I got done loading everything else, about five o'clock or so, I jumped on the Honda Trail 125. That little bike is so much fun. Yeah, that was my only motorcycle ride the time I per se got, besides riding my Indian Challenge. Indian Challenger to a storage unit. Yeah, right now down in Tennessee, I now have my race truck in a storage container with the Challenger in a storage container, and I have the the, uh, the Dodge Challenger car. I should clarify that the Challenger motorcycle, Indian motorcycle, those two are in one container, and then the other container is the Challenger all by itself. That's all it will fit, really. A 10 by 20, uh, 10 by 20. Uh, container, you're getting only one good size car in there. You ain't getting no full size four door truck in there. There's no way. You have to get a 30 footer. So, so those vehicles are down there in storage and stuff. But I saw my gold rush from my mother in law's house. But I'm going to get that out of there. And uh, so that was a project it's, it's a, that I had to kind of cross the bridge and take on to kind of just look to the future of where things are going so uh that's all family stuff and it just doesn't end right so the rejection have i been rejected in so many ways yeah i've been rejected a lot of ways in my whole life who hasn't had to have that story right but anyways back to that honda little is that little honda 125 trail bike that is such a cool bike to ride around it really does i think help you keep that motorcycle training you know that's the whole thing about riding motorcycles you get older you better keep on riding because you just need to have that time on the uh, on the seat to just continue to be a good rider and hopefully a better rider. But then later I got the Gator out, the John Deere Gator out, and I took the dogs up for a nice road trip on the back roads up here where I live. And, and we had a great time with that Gator. But years ago we used to have the Honda Pioneer four-door, and that's really the better unit in all sincereness. The Honda Pioneer is the better machine. But I just like to change up the flavor and just a John Deere guy right now. How about that Bass Pro Shops hat, huh? With the Bass Pro Shops here down there in Tennessee waiting for the truck to get serviced on Friday. And so anyways, we uh, we blasted around that gator. And the only downside to that thing is the back the back area is not secure. And the Pioneer, if you get the four-door unit, it's a secured unit if you get it set up with the canopy and the rear uh, cage per se. So I've had one of those and done a lot of back roading with those, the dogs. So this time, the Gator, is the first time I did a real road trip with all the dogs. And five, you so you get five dogs, the daughter and I, or seven of us in that Gator, and we went up to the back road. you got to watch that video. I had no idea, as I got way, way up the road from the house, that one of my dogs, Tango, the gray-colored dog, was missing. <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm looking back. And I'm like, he's gone. And I mean, I'm thinking, that dog has never been off their property, per se. And that dog's never been, you know, wandered off the property. He's gotten outside the gate or fence, but he's never been on his own way up in the woods. So, yeah, wow, that was kind of, that was a little, you know, you know, that was concerning. So I was blessed on how we turned around and not even a mile back down the road is where he jumped out and he was standing there in the road like, what about me? So that was, that was you can see it on my video, if you want to watch the gator, the, the gator and the dogs, and yikes, the dog, one dog gets uh, lost. So anyways, I just thought to myself, the morning conversation, rejection, rejection, I haven't made a comment, really a video on that, but I think the rejection, how can we use that in the car, the car industry? Well, right now, apparently, from the latest news, automotive news and banking news, a lot of people are now getting rejected for car loans. So apparently, if your credit score is 680 or lower, you're, the odds of buying a car now is more challenging, and then borrowing money is even more challenging. So the subprime loan market's really getting killed by all their previous deals during the pandemic, and probably even pre-pandemic, where people aren't paying their bills. And so the bankers are really getting stricter and tougher, and they're just not loaning the money like they used to. So apparently there's an increase, like a 14% increase or something like that. It's like 14% or 21% of the people who go apply for a car loan today don't qualify to buy a car loan. So the car dealers are now seeing that. They've seen rejections of applicants and people that want to go borrow money 
same thing. They're being rejected. So in that aspect of the car industry, the car industry is now starting to feel the, uh, and, I, and I know that because I have friends who are in the business and they've told me that the banks, the banks aren't getting any easier to work with. That's how they say these things. One thing about car dealerships, I'm telling you, the owners of these car dealerships and managers of these car dealerships, motorcycle dealerships, they're not going to share with you the reality of what's going on. Yeah, they're not going to do it. It's a propaganda machine to the max, meaning you're not going to hear the news of the dealer telling you we're dead in the water. we got to sell cars. we we, we got to, you know, we're, we're begging you to buy a car. Those days, it's just, it's just it's a huge no-no because it then gives the consumer the upper hand to try to negotiate a deal. So I guarantee in these meetings, I've never been a car salesman. I've never worked at a car dealership. I only worked in the back end and parts. Back in the 80s, when I used to be a parts guy to sell parts to the the back, uh, you know, the front end and the back end for service guys. I was back in like 84, 85. And so the number one thing I guarantee is managers teach all these these people. It's like you don't share what's going on in the dealership. You don't start telling people we're in dire straits or we're having our challenges sell stuff. But here's what's interesting. I haven't showed this on my videos here. I'm down there in Christianburg, Virginia. There's a Jeep Ram Dodge dealership, and their inventory was Spartan. They didn't have a lot of vehicles, but you see all these other YouTuber guys showing these videos where there's masses of product everywhere, and they're in dire straits, and the huge discounts are coming. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. I mean, Jesus Christ. But are the dealerships now starting to feel rejected? Is the day coming to the dealerships where now they're feeling rejected? Not only you feel rejected, but they see other consumers who are just sick of this expensive is all get out pricing that in your eyes you want to be rejected who's ever had that feeling you know what i just heard rejected i don't feel good about this deal i hope they say no who hasn't had that happen in their lifetime yeah i can tell you those stories over and over again that harley davidson s low rider st i bought my daughter i really didn't feel like i guy would get that deal done because what i the deal i wanted versus the deal he wanted he, so I just told him one numbers of my deal and see if he even gets approved. It was all said and done. He got the deal done. But I really was more like, I'm not, I really don't feel like buying another motorcycle right now in Florida. That's how my life is. Yeah, and my credit score is not that great because I too many too many damn toys. So there's so many, so many times I've been in cardio. So I'm like, you know what? I hope the deal gets rejected because I just heard I do the deal. But then they get the deal all going, and the numbers are starting looking like, ah, all right, we go ahead and do the deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't go in a dealership with me, because I'll finagle a way for you to take home a car or truck. Or, yeah, you don't believe that? <laughs> well, yeah, believe me. If you hang out with me, it's not going to be good. <laughs> you won't be rejected. I'll figure out how to not be rejected, right? Yeah, 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 right. Uh, so... <clears throat> Anyways, but another thing that's going on too is people are, are rejecting the prices not only for cars. Now think about this. I, I read an article the other day, and it said that the price of vehicles has gone up like 36% since pre-pandemic. I mean, not even for me. I'm like, you're telling me a $40,000 car now is 50? I don't think those numbers are right. I, I think that... Or, where they're getting those numbers, I definitely believe the forty thousand car thousand dollar car now is forty eight thousand. You know, maybe fifty, maybe, but that's that's like a twenty percent increase, not no thirty six percent increase. So, I don't know if that number that that was the number I read. But the point is, people are rejecting the price of cars and they're sitting on the sidelines. A lot of people are just like, nope. And I think a lot of people are waiting for the day when this all starts to go south, which that's. That's the Doomer Gloomer channels that draws in people all the time. For, you know, every day it's a new story. The end is near. End of the line. Get your cash out of the banks. What's this? I mean, you can just see so many videos of that type of you know title and content. But here's the thing: for the consumers and the housing side, I think people more than ever rejecting uh, the the cost of housing. And it all goes down to not only how houses have borderline doubled in price here in the last three years, it seems like, but also that the interest rates are through the roof. And the Fed has created this. I mean, it just makes no sense. The Fed has raised the rate to five and a quarter, and they're not done yet because they're not seeing that there's going to be this catastrophic recession coming. So they still feel like they can continue to raise these rates because people are still absorbing the higher rate 
And are they radically pulling back yet? I think that now, I would say now, I think you're, I think that reality is things are kind of starting to change more now than they have in the last three years. And what I mean by that is, I think the, the challenge right now, as people know, is the housing market. The housing market is is in shambles in some ways because so many people have such low interest loans and they bought their house right during the pandemic or a little pre-pandemic and the value of their home now is maybe 30 to 50 percent or more worth more. But their challenge is that they go out and they buy a new home and the interest rate on the loan is going to be probably 7%, six and three quarters, six and a half. You can buy them down. But the whole point is, I think more and more people are rejecting what's going on. And then there's a whole article about the malls. People are rejecting going to the mall. There's story after story now, these big mega malls that are worth, here's one in Connecticut something like Crystal Mall up in somewhere up there in Connecticut that in 2012 had a value of $150 million. It just went to foreclosure and bankruptcy for $9 million. Yeah, I don't think anybody's really surprised of what's going on in the mall sector per se because we know people are rejecting going to the brick and mortar when you can just go to the internet and use the internet to go shop and buy whatever the heck you want. I mean, something new, I'm telling you anybody here this morning, but the whole point is it's the rejection. And so another reason I thought of the rejection this morning was because of artificial intelligence, the generative pre-trained transformer, the chat GPT. The, um, apparently the Guild's Awards um, people are suing uh, Microsoft and OpenIA, OpenAI, and probably will be Elon Musk as well, but apparently I mean, and this is just where we are in today's world of the information age and now the artificial intelligence age, which, remember, that was just opened back up like in November of last year. And that's exploding like you just can't believe. That's why that NVIDIA chip maker's stock went from like a nothing value to like a 3 or $400 value stock that makes these superconductor chips to be able to um, handle this artificial intelligence advancement of technology. So rejection of these screenwriters and these artists and these um, musicians, a lot of very talented people that have produced you know, music, uh, movies, books, they feel that they are being rejected by the artificial intelligence because their knowledge and their information is being fed into the chat GPT and, and they're suing for copyright uh, infringement. But the but on the other hand, there's a, it's, I'm trying to think of the, the word, that free space. So there's free space um, language in today's world of where you can use copyright information through free freedom of, I guess, expression and talk but there's kind of a fine line there. So these, so all these individuals are getting together and they're trying to make the point that their knowledge is being abused by being fed into artificial intelligence, which they strongly feel the future of their careers and uh, jobs and monies are gonna be harmed severely because the artificial intelligence is gonna take what they've created for the artificial intelligence to outsmart them in so many aspects. I mean, that's that's the running you know thought is for all these tech people, the concern is that they're going to uh, lose their jobs in the tech IT side. Not everybody, but they think they're going to really slice off you know percentage because the artificial intelligence will overtake their jobs from the computer being able to do the same thing they do, if not better, and so. For the screenwriters and these other uh, talented individuals, they see on how um, Google, Alphabet, there's another there's another um, word out there that I just can't think of the tip of my tongue. But anyways, they're seeing on how everything that they've made and created is being used to teach artificial intelligence on how to create movies and how to create songs and how to create art you know artwork and the list goes on and on and on so 
in their world right now, their position, they've been rejected because the big the big guys, the Bill Gates of Microsoft, the Sam Altman of Open AI, which is basically Microsoft, um, and then other select um, artificial intelligence companies, they're they're borderline fighting what these people are trying to claim is of what they're doing with their knowledge. So, but then I think to myself, Elon Musk, I think to myself, is Elon Musk going to be part of this in so many aspects? Think about this. In some aspects, you as a Tesla owner of his car helped advance Tesla to a higher level of the, um, what is it? The, the driving, I'm trying to think of the word full, full driving, I think, FDS or something like that. I just, I'm not a Tesla person, but it's, it's the full driving capability of the Tesla, which is already going on. And I think to myself, so when do all the, uh, you know, the, the people start putting their hand out saying, hey, wait a second, I drove that car to a degree. I mean, I drove the car in the early stages of the Tesla vehicles. And all the stuff that I did with that car helped train it to be a better car to give this full driving, uh, you know, self-driving capability. Where's my royalty for my, uh, you know, my time and efforts? You know, right, yeah, right. But I think myself as well, what about the race car drivers? These race car drivers, I mean, is the future NASCAR going to be the drone car? I mean, come on. Where is it going with all these video games? And all this, you see the drone racing with these young guys racing these drones in warehouses. I mean, is it going the next step eventually that these we driverless race cars, that you'll have guys with paddle sticks in their hands that'll be racing around the track with these electric... Yeah, I mean, it's, that's where it's going. There's no doubt in my mind. You're going to have a whole other racing series of people driving these race cars that won't be in the car. Yes, and so... You know, the safety factor and the well-being and then you know for you to be that that level then the artificial intelligence takes over yeah the artificial intelligence now we have an artificial intelligence vehicle where they could put a like a robot looking person in it but to a degree you wouldn't even need to do that yeah is that the next phase drag racing i mean when does it go to motocross when do the motorcycles become self-balancing honda's already made one of those a few years ago, one of the motorcycles become self-autonomous motorcycles. Oh my gosh! Can you even imagine? Can you imagine being on like BMW, probably like one of the first ones to bring that to market. Can you even imagine being on a BMW motorcycle that was self-balancing in in driving? <laughs> that would be so freaky. That you're in this bike and it's like you know it moves around and you're just you know it's really weird is. We were coming back from Florida. My daughter, I let my daughter drive that Jeep Green Wagon. Here's that trailer. And I was kind of getting concerned. I'm not, this is no lie. Coming back from Florida, I thought I was starting to have some vision problems because I was in that car and I was looking at my cell phone, and this is the passenger seat. And my daughter isn't used to that line, keep it in between the lines type of vehicle. And, and she just in that trailer back there, and she kind of was had that car doing like a little wiggle, like a little dance. And man almighty, after like a few hours of her, me sitting in that passenger seat, and I was looking at my phone and putting it down, it's like it's like the vertigo, or I mean, my whole eye. So I mean, this is no lie. When we got to the gas station to get out, I was like, felt like I was like, I, I couldn't even like stay balanced. I couldn't even stay focused. And I'm like, what is going on with my eyes? What is going? And so, so I was, I mean, it was pretty freaky. I was walking across the parking lot, and I was like, am I going to fall down? Yes. And I'm like, what is, what is wrong with me? So then we got back in the car, and she started driving the road. And I kind of stayed. A little, I took down my phone, and I kind of started noticing how she kind of had that steering wheel with that trailer. She, if you don't know how to drive it. If you drive a truck and trailer, if you're not careful, that back trailer will do a little bit of a walk on you, and you'll dance with it if you don't kind of know how to handle that. And so she was kind of doing that. So I started realizing the car was kind of like moving me around, shaking my, my you know, so I was getting, I guess, seasick in some ways, but I didn't feel like nauseous. I just couldn't, I just want to try to look at something straight on. It was like I was, I couldn't like zero on something, zero in on something. So eventually... <laughs> 
I would I took over. You know, I mean eventually I took over and sure enough, once I took over that car, even though I was like, Man, can I even drive all the way back home? But once you order a car and I started driving that vehicle, then it all went away. It's like, yep, that's exactly what that was. So anyways, back, you know, kinda of little yeah. Did I just reject my daughter from driving a truck and trailer? <laughs> yeah, right. So so anyways, the uh, the future, yeah, so are the race car drivers of the future to be rejected? I mean, it, because the car, you know, just like you're talking about the motorcycles, that this artificial intelligence, this self-driving, this the list is infinite of where we're going with this generative uh, pre-trained transformer uh, computer technology. It's insane. Or, I mean, even for me, I guarantee you, it's bigger and deeper than I even can even comprehend. So if somebody's more into that, they can sit here and go, oh, you're just tip of the iceberg of where all this stuff's going. Uh, what's going to start to play out in our lifetime? Especially for the younger people. I mean, people in their teens and 20s, what they're going to witness over the next 20, 30 years, I think it's going to be massive. Oh, yeah, so here, talking about getting rejected, the Teamsters Union, they got rejected. Yellow Freight's done. They've closed doors. They're going to file bankruptcy. So talking about getting rejected, the Teamsters Union, who's been arguing with Yellow Freight, Yellow Freight now for like the last few years, they've been rejected because uh, they've been told to all go home and all the trucks have been parked, all the facilities, the lights have been turned off, and it's, for the most part, over. Wow. Wow. But yet, you hear uh, the city administration says everything's on fire, everything's beautiful, everything's... I mean, I don't disagree. Everywhere I go, people are buying things. I mean, there's no doubt. There's nothing slowing down where I go. Down in Florida, I didn't see any slowdown per se of anything radical. Um, Tennessee, but I will say this. You don't see a lot of for sale signs. So it does seem like the for sale signs... And that's the challenge. I was just talking about a little earlier being rejected. The realtors, I guess, feel they're getting rejected because so many people don't want to sell their home now. So that's challenging. I'd be interested to you know any bitch a realtor, what's going on their end. My guess would be they're still doing good, but my guess would be also that their challenge is finding people to uh, sell their house. So I, I don't think it's a situation where people don't have the money i think it's more about people are being more cautious about their money and not getting caught up in paying too much for a home and paying too much on interest on the on the home so i mentioned a, a realtor i imagine a realtor be like, yeah i mean you know we're, we're doing okay we're holding our own but the challenge is we just don't have as many homes for sale like we used to and so earlier i was talking about the fed has raised interest rates so much that they're creating this dilemma of a shortage of housing for so many people. And wow, what's being accomplished out of this? I mean, really, what's being accomplished? Can anybody really grasp? I mean, nothing's going down. I mean, I was talking this other day. Are we being fooled? Are we being played last week? Are we being played? Are we at the propaganda machine to the max? I mean, what's going on? I mean, it's not like these higher rates of interest that we're witnessing is creating any huge downfall spiral in um, the cost of goods and services and things. Does anybody see it? I don't see it. I just see things continue to get more expensive. So, all right, everybody. Hey, that's it. Going to kind of wrap it up with that. So, do you feel rejected? Have you been rejected? Yeah. Yeah, we all know that. Nobody likes to be rejected. But you know what? Hopefully, it makes you a stronger and better person. That's the whole challenge of life is you get kicked down and you get back up and dust off your pants and keep on going. So everybody, hope everybody has a great day. Stay tuned for more adventures and more stories. And God bless. Stay safe and have a great day.